All right, everyone, let's get started. Uh, my name is Sam, and I'm going to be talking about social media marketing, how to get started with Facebook, and more specifically, creating a Facebook page for your business. Um, a little bit about me. I've been working for Paladin for about two years, and I do the social media marketing here at Paladin. And if you guys have any questions during the webinar, feel free to ask. Chad will stop me and I'll try to answer your questions as best I can. So let's get started. So this webinar already assumes that you have a Facebook account, uh, a personal Facebook account. Um, you're not gonna want to create a personal Facebook account for your business. Uh, because Facebook actually it's against their policy uh, to create a personal account for a business um, so you're going to want to use your personal business account for this I mean your personal Facebook account for this um, after the slide presentation I, I'll go through all of the steps and show you exactly what I am talking about um, all of the steps in this are going to be for a desktop computer. So if you're working on a tablet or a phone, the steps are not going to pertain to that. Um, also, this webinar is a little bit longer than the usual webinars. So it's going to be about an hour. Feel free to drop out. You can see the recording later. So we're going to go over uh, each of these topics. Why should you have a Facebook page? Creating a, face, uh, creating a Facebook business page, adding the info, editing the info, um, how to add page admins, because you can have multiple people to manage your page, um, interacting with other people's posts and pages, posting on your own page, and some best practices of using Facebook. So first thing is, why have a Facebook page? Now, having a Facebook page actually increases your authority as a business. It builds brand loyalty and recognition because people are able to then interact with you and it gives it a more personable feel. Um, it gains momentum in social media and Facebook is the most widely used social media platform, so it's a good idea to be on it. Um, and this is a really interesting statistic. 75% of male internet users are on Facebook, and 83% of female internet users are on Facebook. So that's a lot of, so everyone who's on the internet, that's the amount of people who are on Facebook, and that's quite a big number. So we're gonna go over the steps to create a business page, and don't worry about following along right now. I will go through all of these steps again at the end with my demo. So first you'll have to decide who's going to be the page owner. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be the same person who will manage your page because you can add page managers later. Um, so you'll have to log in to your personal Facebook account and then you're going to go over to, if you see in my screenshot, there's a little arrow and you can click on that arrow and go down to create page. Then Facebook will prompt you for some information. You want to make sure you have all that information ready. This is some of the information that it's going to ask for. It's going to ask for a profile photo, um, a logo, a business logo is pretty standard, um, a cover photo. Um, there are a few things that you can do for this. A storefront or a group picture is also pretty standard to put for your cover photo. And then you'll want some other photos about uh, just showing the inside of your store. You know, uh, give customers a good idea of what your store is, right? So if you are a hardware store, then go through and take some pictures of your team members, of your checkout stands, of some of the products you sell, and that'll give customers a good idea about what your store is. The call to action button. And that one, it varies. You can have a call to action button that 
sends your Facebook page a message, or you can have a call to action button that says call us. And customers can click on that through Facebook on your Facebook page. And whatever action you've chosen, that's what will happen. So pretty self-explanatory. And about, you want this to be really well written because when someone is looking at your Facebook page, this is one of the first places they're going to look to learn more about your business. You want your website URL, your phone number, your location, and your hours of operation. Um, and then, of course, appearance matters because this is what customers or potential customers are going to be looking at. So try to get professional looking photos, you know, well written text, etc. Now, you can always go back and change that information we just talked about. So let's say you redid your logo and you want to go back and change it. You can always go back and change that information. So you'll want to log into your Facebook account. In the top right corner, you'll click the arrow again. And this is assuming you've already created the page. There will be the page under your pages. So if you see Paladin Point of Sale is highlighted right here. You'll click on that and then you'll get to another page that looks like the far right screenshot. And you'll just click the ellipses and edit page info. Now when you click that you'll get to a screen that looks like this. And there's a whole bunch of things you can change um, we're not going to go over everything in this webinar because there is a lot to this, but your basic page information is going to be on this screen. So you can actually, there are tabs below this uh, where it says home right here. There are tabs below that you can click and reorder the information. So when you set this up, you might want to play around with that, you know, put what you think is most important at the top of your page. Now, I was saying before that the person who owns this page doesn't necessarily have to manage it. And that's because you can actually add other people as page admins. And this is really useful. I mean, here at Paladin, we have a couple people that help manage this page. Um, so you can do that by going to page roles. And so you'll go to your page, which is, again, you click under your pages right here. And then it'll show you the edit screen, just like we saw right here. When you go to edit page, you'll want to go down to page roles. And then you'll be able to search for a person's Facebook profile, select that person, and then you select the role that you want to give them. If they're going to be managing the page, I would suggest giving them the admin role, but there are other roles you can choose too with less capabilities. Now, it's important that you interact with other people's posts and pages because that helps them return the favor. So if you like someone's page, a lot of the time they'll like your page back. And that's just common courtesy in Facebook. You can also post on other people's pages. So let's say you have a really cool article that you think would do well for that business's demographic. You would go onto their, their Facebook page and where it says, write something on this page. You can't see the full thing here, but it says, write something. You would click in that box and then post what you want to post. Now, you want to make sure that you're posting as the right entity. So if you want to post as yourself, then it's probably already set to that. But if you want to post as your page, then you have to click on this little icon where I'm circling right now. 
and you have to click the arrow. Oops. You have to click the arrow, and you'll have to choose what you want to post as. So here I have Paladin Point of Sale highlighted. I would just click that, and then I would be posting as Paladin Point of Sale. Not all business pages will allow you to post on their page. So if it doesn't have this box, um, it just means that they don't allow other people to post on their page. Now, these are some of the interactions you can have with someone else's post. So if you're on, let's say, a hardware retailing page, you can do a couple things. You can share their post on your page. So this is a really good way to kind of build rapport with this particular business's Facebook page. If you share their post, they might be more inclined to share your post in the future. You can also like their post, and it's the same thing. If you like their post, they might be more inclined to like one of your posts in the future. Um, their customers, too, can see who likes this. So let's say I pressed like. It would say, Paladin Point of Sale likes this. And so their customers can see that. And it might lead their customers to your Facebook page. And then be sure that you are acting as a correct entity. So if you've chosen to act as your business page, you want to make sure that, you're, that you've chosen that. So in the red circle here, you'll just click there and choose your business page. The last thing you can do is you can comment on their post. So if you really liked it or if you have something to add, then write a comment and all of their customers can also see that. Hey, Sam. Yep. Can I interrupt you? Yeah. Kate Schlenz has, an answer, has a question here that says, um, how do you make sure that you're interacting, interacting with other people's pages, specifically liking from your page and not your personal account? Yeah, really good question. So where it says write something, on the right-hand side of that, where you see this red circle, It'll have an icon there. Now, that icon is going to be your uh, the profile picture. So if you see right here, it has the Paladin logo in the red circle. That means I'm posting as Paladin. But on the right screenshot, it has my personal profile picture as the icon. So that means I'm posting as myself. So if you want to be 100% sure, then always click that little arrow next to the icon and choose the entity you want to post as. Does that clarify it? Yeah, thank you. Perfect. So the same thing goes on your personal, uh, on your business Facebook page. You can go to your page, and then where it says write something, you can Type, you can start typing here, or you can choose a different kind of post. So let's say you have a really cool video that you want to share, or a photo. Then you would click share a photo or video. Pretty self-explanatory. So I'm not going to go through all these options, but you might want to play around with these and see what kind of post you can create. And get creative with it. Uh, the more engaging content you post, the better it's going to be for your Facebook page. And again, make sure you're posting as the correct entity. So as we went over before, just click the, the arrow next to the icon on the right-hand side when you're posting, and then choose your entity. Now, when you are posting, you can schedule your posts. So let's say you want to schedule five posts for the whole month. You can actually schedule that. So next to your, at the bottom of your post, there's going to be a publish button. Don't press publish if you want to schedule it. You're going to press the arrow next to it, and then it'll give you a couple options, and you'll choose schedule, and you can choose the date that you want it to be published. It even allows you to choose the time.
So if you accidentally publish something or if you publish something and you decide that you want to make an edit, you can definitely do that on Facebook. What you'll do is you'll find the post. It'll show up on your page. And you'll click the ellipses right here next to your post. And it'll give you some options. And you can click Edit Post or Delete from Page. So you can also tag another business in your post using the page's handle. The handle looks something like the at symbol with the, it's not quite the page name, but it's the handle that the page has chosen. So you can actually, if I start typing hardware retailing, uh, at hardware retailing, the hardware retailing page will come up and I can tag them. So let's say I went to an event with hardware retailing and I wanted to tag them on this post. Then I would type the at symbol with their handle. Now, there are tons of things that you can post on Facebook. Um, I wanted to give you guys some post ideas because at the beginning, it is a little bit difficult to come up with a lot of content, especially engaging content. So, some things you can do are you can post contests. You can post giveaways. Those convert really well. Um, if you have sales, so let's say you're doing a 20% off on all of one department. Well, you can post that on Facebook and some of your customers will see that. You can post questions to engage your, your customers. So, you know, do you like Coke versus Pepsi? You know, obviously it would pertain to, to the industry, but Posting engaging questions is really good. Um, photos of staff and happy customers. This makes your Facebook viewers feel closer to your business. And that's part of what builds that brand loyalty is they feel a personal connection to you now through social media. Um, if something great happens, post it on Facebook. Your customers love to hear about that stuff. Uh, town events. So if you are involved in any local um, local get-togethers, anything, post it on Facebook. Um, if you have old content that performed really well, then you can cycle through that stuff again. You know, you don't want to do it too close together, but you can always repost that. Useful articles or videos that'll add value to your page. If someone finds useful content on it, they're going to keep going back to your page for more useful content. Interesting industry news and industry-related memes. Everyone likes a good laugh. So you share something funny, people also will continue to follow you. And if you can't think of content, you can always share someone else's. So like I was showing you before, um, how you can share someone else's post. Just, you know, go on someone else's business page, find a post that you think your users will like, and you can share it. And then on all of these things, it's important that you include images with your posts. It's, um, most customers will not engage with a post that doesn't have an image. So using images will convert the best and increase engagement. So here are some examples of things that I found um, that you can post. So for instance, we reposted Avalara's quiz. Um, you know, we reposted a magazine article and then on the right hand side we have a contest. And here we have a an event that we went to, another useful article, and a contest.
And then here's just a few more examples. Uh, an event that we were hosting last year. A question. And something for the holidays. Um, you know, if it's Thanksgiving, just do a happy Thanksgiving. Valentine's Day, make a happy Valentine's Day. Just to show your your viewers that you're actively on Facebook. Now, here's some do's and don'ts of posting on Facebook. You want to post friendly, engaging content. Um, you know, if you can strike an opinion without a heavy emotional attachment, that's one of the best things you can do to increase engagement. Neutral topics. So don't post religious topics and political topics. Of course, that's only a suggestion, um, but you could lose followers if they don't agree with you. And do post images with your posts. Now, it's about quality, not quantity. So if you post a lot, but it's not useful or interesting to your viewers, it, it has less value. If you post less frequently, but all of your posts are quality posts that are interesting and engaging, that's going to be a lot more, that's going to hold a lot more value and continue to help gain followers. Um, research shows that it's a good idea to post engaging content for about five, about five times per month for small businesses. However, there is no golden number that'll work for all businesses. So, You'll have to try some, you know, try some stuff out and see what works for your business. Now, you can see how well your post performs, your post and your page actually, um, by going to your page, and then up on the top there's going to be a bar with some options. You'll see page, inbox, notifications, insights, and publishing tools. If you go to Insights, it'll give you a whole bunch of it'll give you a whole bunch of stats on how well your page is performing, how well your posts are performing. You can't see all of them here, but there are quite a few stats that it'll show you, and it's really interesting. So if you are actively trying to gain more followers or reach more of your viewers, I would suggest going here and checking back, you know, just periodically. So you can see here, this one actually shows you the posts and how many people it reached, how many people engaged. Um, so definitely check this periodically and see, you know, is there something you can do? Is there something that performs better than others? And for instance, if there is something that performs, that outperforms everything, you know, post more stuff like that. Now there's some common courtesy best practices things uh, that you want to do on Facebook. So, this is the same bar that was in this screenshot right here. It's going to be towards the top of the screen. So when you go to the notifications part of that, you can see who's liked your page, who's liked your post, if anyone shared your content, if anyone sent you a message, uh, information like that. And it's really good to respond to those things. So if someone tags you, it'll give you a notification. Go to that post that they tagged you on and click like. Shares or likes on your post, um, you might want to keep that person in mind when you're looking for content to share. So when you can't think of any content, go back to that person who liked your post two weeks ago and see if they have any content that you could share. If someone likes your page, it's uh, generally common courtesy to go and like their page as well. If someone sends you a message, 
you can go to your inbox and you can see that option is right next to notifications. So everything's right there where you need it to be. And you want to reply to any messages promptly. And I say that because Facebook actually displays on your page how fast you respond to, not to messages. So if you're very responsive, it'll say responds within two days. If you take about two weeks, it'll actually display responds in two weeks. So because it displays, you want to make sure that your customers know if, you, if they contact you, that you'll be there for them. If someone leaves a review on your page, um, you'll want to reply quickly. Whether it be good or bad, um, it shows that you are, again, responsive. So if someone posts a bad review, you'll also want to quickly respond to that because that is a public thing if someone leaves a review. So if someone leaves a bad review and there's no response for you, everyone else can see it. So if they see that you've quickly resolved any problems, that's going to reflect better on you. Now, immediately you may not see any results for your Facebook efforts, and that's okay. Just keep going, keep posting, keep trying to get followers. You'll have to learn strategies that work for your business because not every strategy works for, for every business. Um, and there's always current social media trends online. If you just type in Google, social media trends or Facebook ideas, uh, increased Facebook engagement, there will be tons of resources for you. So don't be afraid if you're not getting results and you don't know what to do, just keep going. Now, by default, when you post on Facebook, it doesn't reach all of your followers. To have more engagement and to reach all of your followers, or you can also reach a targeted audience. Um, and when I say targeted audience, I mean, let's say you want to reach males from 30 to 35, or females from 30 to 35. You'll consider using Facebook ads, page promotions, or post promotions. We're not going to get into exactly what those are in this webinar but just know that those are services that will allow you to reach targeted audiences and all of your followers. And a good idea is to, in your store at the checkout, place a sign that says, never miss a sale, join us on Facebook. Assuming that you put your sales on Facebook, of course, but something to get followers, to let them know, hey, we now have a Facebook page. Follow us on Facebook and learn about this or see all of our sales. And then here are some, some uh, resources for you that just give you some more basic information and you can get this on these slides after the webinar. So I'm going to go through and actually um, do a demo of how to create a Facebook page. So if you want to follow along, great. If not, again, this information will be available to you after the webinar. So I'm signed in to my Facebook page here. And there's a whole bunch of stuff really confusing. Just ignore all of that. What's important is this blue bar at the top here. You want to click the arrow in the far right side and you'll click create page. Now this is going to take you to something that looks like this and most likely you'll want to use local business or place. Now if you actually have a storefront this, this is the one that you're going to want to choose. And it may seem like it's the same thing as company, organization, or institution, but it's, it's not. 
Um, one actually has a storefront and is more of a retail environment, and the company organization or institution is more, um, a little bit more abstract of a business, if that makes sense. So you'll click local business or place, and then I'll ask you for some information. So name your page. I'm going to create Sam's Hardware Store. And the category, well, the hardware store. So it gives you some suggestions right here. I don't think you have to choose any of those. Just put in what pertains to you. And we're just going to put in a fake address here. So after you have all the information, go ahead and click Get Started. Oh, actually, it is going to make you choose a category. <laughs> so I'm going to choose Retail, and then I'm going to say Get Started. Now, it's going to ask you for a profile picture. I'm going to skip this because I don't have an image that I want to use right now. And same with the cover photo. But again, with the profile photo, it's standard to use your logo. And with the cover photo, it's standard to use your storefront or picture of your team. Now, it gives you an option to invite your friends. And then it walks you through publishing your own posts. I'm not going to invite anyone right now, but it is a good idea when you first start this to invite some people that you know, invite some local um, local influences as well. Now, these are the buttons I was talking about before. Someone can like, share, then you have edit page, view insights. Give me one second here. So let's go ahead and we'll go to edit page info. So you can edit all of this info here. And none of this is mandatory, but it's a good idea to have this av available because this is what potential customers are going to see. So you'll add everything in here, what categories your business is, your phone number, website, email address, and hours of operation. Now, I just clicked see all information. And this is all of the info on your store. Now, if I go to settings, up in this top bar here, I click settings. This is where you can choose your page visibility, all, all of these options. Now, we're not going to go through all of them. It's a lot to go through, but I would encourage you to go through here and just poke around to see what's available to you. And then this is the edit page screen that I showed you before. Now, you can reorder this information. So I want my about to be at the top of my page. So I'm just going to click and drag. And then I want my events to be after that. So I'm going to put there. You get the idea. So there are also settings in each of these. So you might want to go through and set that up. You'll probably want to set aside some time to really dig into this. The other thing I went over was adding someone as a page manager. So I'm going to go down here. I'm in settings, and then I go to page roles. And under assign a new page role, this is where you'll search for another person to add. So I'm going to add them as an admin because I want them to have all permissions 
the only thing a page admin can't do is delete the page. So I want them to manage the page. I'm going to give them the admin role. So Katie's the marketing manager here. I'm going to assign her the admin role for this page. And I'll click Add. Now, I'm going to ask for my password. Let's hope this is the right password. <laughs> and looks like that worked. So now it'll show you down here that Katie Sigvaldson is an admin on this page. And it'll show her a notification when she logs into her account. And when she logs into her account, she'll see the same thing that you see up here. So on the blue bar, when you click the arrow, we'll see Sam's Hardware Store. Now, when Katie logs in, she'll also see Sam's Hardware Store. And she can do everything that you can do except delete the page. Now, interacting with another person's page, we'll go over that again. And I'm just going to go to Palette and Point of Sale. And here's our page. And I'm going to click the ellipses here, and I'm going to go down and choose Like as your page. And then it'll give you an option to choose which page. So I want, I'm want i Sam's Hardware Store right now, so I'm going to choose Sam's Hardware Store and press Submit. And then I can go down here and I can click Write Something. But I want to choose which entity I want to post as. So if you see where it says create a post, if you hover over, it tells you, and you can click and choose. And then you'll post something where it says write something on this page. You can add a photo, which I would highly encourage. You can tag people using the handle. And again, handle is you do the at sign, and you can start typing. It'll show you a list of possible ones that you're looking for. Now, let's say I want to share a post. I'll go down here and I will click Sam's Hardware Store. So I want to make sure I'm posting as the right person. Then I'll click Share. And I can share to a page. Sam's Hardware Store, Sam's Hardware Store. I can include something. This is so cool. And then I post it. And that page owner will get a notification saying, so-and-so, Sam's Hardware Store shared your post. And we'll hope that that makes Palette and Point of Sale more inclined to post uh, to repost for Sam's Hardware Store. The other thing we can do, we can like it. If you actually if you hover over like, it gives you some options. You can like, love, haha, wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> sad, or you can do angry. Um, and then of course you can comment. You can add a photo in your comment, you can add a GIF, sticker, an emoji, whatever floats your boat. Um, and then again, right here in the right side, you want to make sure your posting is the right person. And I repeat that so much because it's such an easy part to miss. It's such a small icon. They really should have made that bigger. But if you remember, you'll be okay. Now, I'm going to go back to my page by going to the arrow and then going to Sam's Hardware Store. I don't actually want to finish my comment, so I'm going to leave. And right where it says write something, I can just type a post. 
So I just created first Facebook page. Check it out. And then of course, you know, you want to make sure you fix any typos <laughs> if you're like me. Um, and then you can add a photo or video. Facebook also does live video now, so if you want to check that out, you can post about events or products. But this is all I want to post for now, so I'm just going to press publish. And then you can see right here. And then this is the one I shared, it appears below. Now, let's say I wanted to schedule a, a post. I do the same thing. So I'm just going to copy and paste the same thing I just put here. And then I click the arrow next to publish, and then I press schedule. And you'll choose the date. So I want it to go out tomorrow. And I want it to go at 7.30. And I press Schedule. And then any schedule post will show right below here. And you can go back and review it. You can go back and edit it. And you can also cancel it, too. So. Let's say I actually want to change this post. What I would do is I'd click the ellipses next to the post right here, and then I click Edit Post, and it just pulls it up. You can change whatever you want. And then you click Save. So we're going to go over insights as well. Now, there's no stats here, so it's not very pretty right now. But you'll be able to choose, let's say I want to see stats for the last 28 days. You can change it to that. So whatever stats you want to see. If you're unsure of what something is, Facebook has the little information icons that It'll actually explain to you what it is. And over on the left panel, it'll tell you, you know, likes. So total likes, net likes. It'll give you a, a timeline, all of this stuff here. I'm not going to go over everything, but again, it's a good idea to go back and check it out. It's interesting, too. Some of the things that you're not sure will perform perform really well. And some of the things that you think will perform really well, don't. So make sure you go back and, and check up on that and you're doing what is working for your business. The next thing is notifications. So we went over, you know, someone likes your page, it'll show up here. Someone comments or shares on your post, it'll show up here. Obviously, it's a new page. We don't have any notifications, but it would all show up in a feed right here. Right next to that, we have Inbox. And Facebook likes to have all these pop-ups to tell you what to do. But this will show all of the messages that people have messaged you. It'll give you a history. Oh, my. And you can respond to messages here, too. And that's actually it for the demo. And I'd like to open it up for questions. Does anyone have any questions? If anyone has any questions, they can go ahead and take this time to type into the little questions pane, and then we can go ahead and address those. We'll give it another 30 seconds or so. 
Oh, we got uh, one more here that says, can you show us how to create a quiz or poll to our Facebook page? Um, yeah, so that's actually a little bit more advanced than what we are going over in this particular webinar. But um, when you create a post, it'll give you some options and you'll want to choose the poll option and then it'll Facebook will prompt you from there. Does that help? Yeah, that helps. There's another question here by, from Michelle. What are the benefits of boosting posts? If you could speak on that for a second. I'm sorry, Chad, I can't hear you very well. Can you repeat that? Yes, sorry, what are the benefits of boosting posts? Yeah, excellent question. So by default, Facebook doesn't reach all of your followers. It's more of a randomized who it's going to actually reach. Um, so by boosting your posts, you can reach more people. You can also reach other people that aren't necessarily following you. So if you have a really valuable article that you've written, and you want to reach a targeted audience, so let's say you want to reach uh, store owners from 20 to 30 years old, right? It's a pretty targeted audience. Um, you'd be able to do that with Boost Post. It just shows it to more people, so that hopefully more people will interact with your page. Excellent. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question that they'd like to uh, type into the questions pane and go ahead and ask that? We'll give it another old minute or so just to so everyone can collect their thoughts and have some time to type out any questions they may have. All right, Sam. Well, I think that concludes the uh, question session here, guys. We're always available, so if you uh, think of anything post the webinar, feel free to reach out to our um, customer service department. You can get to Sam in the uh, she's in the marketing department, and I'm sure she'd be happy to take any questions if you guys have, think of any past this point. If uh, if that's all right with you, Sam. Yeah, that's totally fine. Reach out if you need to. Thanks for taking the time and listening to me. Excellent. Well, everyone has a great, uh, great day and um, enjoy your Facebooking.